West of the city of Portland, Maine, about a quarter hour's drive by car, lies the village of Gorham. Just north of the village is Fort Hill, and it was here on November the 26th, 1827, that twin girls, Ellen and Elizabeth, were born to Robert and Eunice Harmon. The Harmons were devout Methodists with eight children to care for. Though their home no longer stands today, this marker indicates its approximate location. Later, the family moved to the seaside city of Portland, where Robert Harmon continued his hat-making trade and young Ellen attended the Bracket Street School. But at the age of nine, her life was to take a dramatic turn at the hands of a jealous schoolgirl. You're a cheat, Ellen. I'll get you! Ellen was carried to her home in Clark Street, where it was soon discovered that her nose was broken and every feature of her face had changed. She lay in a coma for three weeks. On recovering a little, she soon discovered the difference her appearance made to the way others treated her. Ellen Harmon made several attempts to resume her schooling. But the results of the accident made it almost impossible to study and retain what she learned. Her hand trembled so much she could make no progress in writing and with great reluctance she eventually gave up all attempts to gain a formal education. During this lonely and discouraging period she spent many pleasant hours here in the woods of Deering Oaks Park. In March 1840, William Miller came to Portland and presented a series of lectures on the second coming of Christ at the church that once stood on this site in Casco Street. The Harmon family attended his meetings, and Ellen later wrote of Miller, He traced down the prophecies with an exactness that brought convictions and held the crowds as if spelled. In June 1842, Ellen Harmon and 11 others were baptized and received into the fellowship of the Methodist Church that once stood nearby this present Methodist Church in Chestnut Street. But her joyful Christian experience was interspersed with times of despondency. Nevertheless, Miller's second visit to Portland confirmed her confidence in the soon coming of Jesus, a confidence that she enthusiastically shared. However, the Harmon's acceptance of Miller's teachings did not meet with the approval of their church. Here is the record of the quarterly business meeting that was conducted in September 1843. The pastor arose and stated that Robert Harmon and his family, including Ellen Harmon, had entered an appeal from the decision of a committee by which they had been expelled from the church. It was unanimously voted to sustain the decision of the committee in his expulsion. Ellen Harmon often claimed that the year 1844 was the happiest of her life. Yet with tens of thousands of others, the Harmon family suffered bitter disappointment when Jesus did not come on October 22. By December 1844, most Advent believers had given up their confidence in the validity of October 22. Ellen Harmon and her friends had accepted that the fulfillment of the 2,300 year prophecy must still be in the future. It was in that same month that Ellen received the first of some 2,000 visions and prophetic dreams that God would give her over the next 70 years. During these visions, she was totally unconscious of her surroundings, 
And like the prophet Daniel envisioned, she did not breathe throughout the time of the revelation. The visions varied in length from a very short duration to nearly four hours. Some were given in public before a few or up to hundreds of eyewitnesses. These were generally accompanied by marked physical phenomena during the first 30 years of her ministry that provided strong evidence to those that witnessed them that the work was of God. Others were given during prayer, writing or speaking and were unaccompanied by physical phenomena. However, during the last 40 years of her ministry, the visions were usually prophetic dreams given during the night. Jane Loughborough, a church pioneer, saw her in public vision on some 50 occasions. He wrote that at the beginning of a vision, the word glory was repeated three times, but each time more faintly. Initially, she lost strength and consciousness, but was then able to walk about the room. She would sometimes make gestures with her arms and hands, but those present were not able to move them in any way. Her eyes were open while she looked upward, appearing to be gazing intently at some faraway object. Though she did not breathe, her pulse was regular and the color of her face remained normal. At the end of the vision, her surroundings appeared to be in total darkness. Her power to see even the brightest objects returned only gradually. Hello. Hi, Ellen. Just prior to her first vision in December 1844, Ellen's health rapidly worsened. Tuberculosis, it seemed, would take her life. In this condition, she responded to an invitation from a close friend, Mrs. Elizabeth Haynes, to visit in her home just across the bridge in South Portland. I'll give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his needs among the people, sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye about his wondrous works, glory ye in his holy name, let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Shall we kneel in prayer? 